Hey guys, this is Looney, and I'm wearing a dino onesie. Long, long story. <laughs> Don't ask. Today we are touring my hardcore world. We are now on day 6473. It's been a mighty long adventure, and in all of those days, I've only slept uh, 66 times. Probably a little bit less than that, because if you set your respawn on a bed, and it is nighttime, even if you don't sleep, it will actually count as sleeping. I've done so much in this world, and today we start from the estimated spawn block. This is where I think the world began. Can't be entirely sure, well we could be, but I, I kind of like that we guessed it. When I first spawned into this world, I found myself in this little ravine, and as you can see underwater here, this was a tiny river. I, I built like a um, farm area there to get the first wheat to um, breed, breed up some cows that we did inside of this little mountain cave because I was super, super, super scared when I first started this world. This room in here, this is where the cows were. And these are my first couple chests. These are the furnaces I used to smelt up cobblestone to get normal stone to build with. And down here, is my first strip mine when I went down here I was absolutely terrified so what happened is I dug into this cave I had to drop down build my staircase and I just completely beamed it and missed it by not even one block I think oh yeah it is one block it would it would have fit it but it didn't so I had to take that down oh no this is the original staircase this was just dumb look by how far I missed it down here all the way at Y11, which uh, back before 118 was diamond strip mining level. This is where I found a lava pool. These are the last little remnants. And I got a bunch of lava buckets that I used to cast a portal. That portal goes to the nether. And our nether is really, really connected. But it's gonna be a little while before we get there. Because first I wanna tell you something about what happened right when I started the world. There was a forest area over here a river going this way, which didn't run very far, but I didn't know that at first, because the first thing I tried is going this way. And then I found myself in a mountainy, snowy, spruce forest, and truth be told, that didn't give me a whole lot of confidence. So I doubled back, I went back over this ledge and followed the river all the way over here, which wasn't very far at all because then the river just it stopped but i kept going through the forest and that forest let me pass this swamp over here could have found a lava pool didn't initially I, I did find it later and then i found a village and that village to me was the perfect place to settle because i thought you know what if i can get villagers here we can set up a villager breeder which we did attached to this carrot farm the farmer's still in there Made a villager breeder down this way, which I uh, have since taken apart because I'm not all that much into villager breeding. It's uh, it's kind of barbaric practice, so I was like, you know what? We should probably dismantle the whole thing. But I did keep the librarians because these guys, they got me started early on. They provided me with all the books I needed and they, they have like the essentials. This guy has mending. Over here we got protection for, we got unbreaking. And then here's a couple extra ones, like efficiency, I think. Looting, very important. I had a small chicken farm and a nether wart farm, but I never really used those much. And here is a AFK fish farm, which I barely used at all. Like 15 minutes. I wanted to get Nautilus shells for a conduit, but it took too long. I was like, no, I don't want AFK. It's a huge waste of time. We can much, much better focus that time on building something and making progress. I had to get more diamonds though before I was ready to do anything really. So down here is the second strip mine. And over this way, there's quite a lot of caves attached to it. So we had a lot of mining sessions here, quite a bit of action. And eventually I got all the diamonds I needed to make a fully enchanted armor set, fully enchanted tools, and then I was ready to make my way towards the end. Before this world, I had defeated the Ender Dragon in hardcore once. And then I deleted that world because I didn't like the recordings I had made of the first 100 or so days. I, I thought I was very ready for this one. And um, that was uh, partially true. <laughs> I had improved a lot from those first tries. 
And I'm really glad that I did decide to start a new one because the recordings for this one, even the early recordings turned out so much better. This is an early sugarcane farm I used, but you can see these strips over here. And what I actually did is I planted sugarcane around this entire area and it didn't use the farm much at all, but it has been running still. And occasionally I, uh, I emptied it out. It's not a whole lot. Over this way, we are gonna find my first project, the heart of the sea. But for this world tour, I wanna take you on a slightly different path because I feel like we could make this world tour a lot more interesting if we approach it as the world is now rather than as the world was when we first found it. Because it has been my idea, it's been my vision to make a world that is very, very connected. And that is where this place comes in. Before we go and explore here, I want to change my shaders to the ones that I normally use because these shaders, they make the world come alive. As they switch, I want to welcome you guys to a place that we call the Nether Hub. And we're going to tour this one later because I don't quite want to start the tour here. So I'll show you around. But what we're going to do here is we're going to transition to a different project a little further outwards. This is not the one where the world started, but this is the one where we can best explain it. I'm gonna take you guys to the world map, which is located, oh my goodness, there's a lot of endermen there. The world map is located at a place that we call Mount Chattermore. And Mount Chattermore is an ice castle built around a snowball farm. Snowballs, what do we need those for? Well, I will show you guys later. But this here is the ice castle and this is what is now the location of the world map. That is not where the world map originally started. I'll show you that location a little while from now. You guys can see that we're losing some frames here. And that is the very reason why this world map is here. Because this world map is 750 maps big. And that means that things can get quite laggy around here. That is a double amount of item frames, about 1500, 750 item frames, 750 maps, 1500 entities is what I meant to say. But that means that this world map gets quite laggy, even without the shaders. Right in the middle here, you can see a place that we call the heart of the sea or the heart of the season in full. And that is the engine room to my entire series and the middle point of this world. It is not where we spawned, Spawn chunks are right over here and there in the very corner you can see that starter house and the village that we just were. And then right over here you can see the mountains with snow on top of them. And I think that the um, the actual world spawn is right around here. We can barely not see it. But it's a cool place. Then here we have the heart of the sea. And then over there we have the Looney Adventure, written on the map. That's the title of this hardcore series, if you guys did not know that. It is also a project called Looneyville. And we'll visit that one later to show you around there. One more thing nice to know is that over here, right where my crosshair is, that is where the portal room is that brings us to the, uh, to the end. Where in the end, there's something quite special going on as well. But our, our journey continues over at the heart of the sea. So let's go back into the portal, back through the Nether Hub, and I'm gonna show you the rest of the projects in chronological order of when I built them. Now, as I said, the Nether Hub is built around the heart of the sea or the world is built around the heart of the sea so we are going to go into this big portal which is in the main entrance hall that goes up to the main hall of the nether hub and this portal will bring us over to our main base oh dang it's not supposed to look like that down here you don't want to welcome visitors with your business looking like a lush cave if you don't properly tend to a garden it grows wild to clean up nicely, we can't just grab any tool out of the shed either. This or this won't do. Your garden is delicate, so you need the right tool for the job. Luckily, Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their all-in-one performance packets 4.0. 
Their lawnmower has advanced skin safe technology, which reduces the risk of nicks and cuts, so you can trim down the bushes without stripping the logs. The super smart cordless charging system will power your lawnmower for up to 90 minutes of action with a full charge, and the powerful motor cuts right through the overgrowth effortlessly to make your glow very shine. Also included in the Performance Package 4.0 are the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver, two products I've never known I needed, but let me tell you, there's a difference between a trimmed garden and a fresh one. Water the plants down with a shower and apply a bit of Crop Preserver for all-day odor protection. Just like that, we got my garden looking smooth, fresh and presentable. So can yours. Head over to manscaped.com right now and use the exclusive promo code LOONY for 20% off and free shipping on the performance package 4.0. Let's go to our world tour. And thank you very much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. This here, this is the heart of the sea. And to properly check this place out, let's go to this edge over here. I'm going to turn my render distance down a little bit because the heart of the sea is probably the most intense place to load in the world. But I have recently found a way to make it load a lot better. Thank you to uh, Linksy and Dame the Dime for pointing me in the right direction there. This place is a, a ocean monument, but it is much, much more than that. I said it a little while ago, but this in full is titled the heart of the season. And it is the heart of the season because there's a lot going on underground. And I think we should start our tour of the heart of the sea there. The heart of the sea initially started out as a guardian farm, which has been turned off because that guardian farm is uh, no longer necessary in a way. And the reason it is no longer necessary is that around day 1500, I had so much prismarine and sea lanterns that I really didn't know what to do with it. Down the sides of the building, I switched shaders so you guys can see it, but we have this wave, which is on a redstone timer around back and that just keeps on going. This, uh, this pattern is active decorations, as I call it. Let's move back into the basement or into the inside of the building, because in the basement, there's something special going on. The basement of the heart of the sea is what we call the engine room. That is where everything happens that we need to run our world. All my main farms are located over here. My main storage is over on this side. You can see that there's a slime chunk under the floor. Or at least that is where the slime farm is, because this here in the corner is a slime chunk. These are all the storage uh, barrels that we have, which we used to uh, have. We used to have chests here, not barrels, but chests create a little bit of lag. So we got rid of those. Most of these are filled with sugar boxes with whatever material we have. And here in the corner, we have little aquariums that are guardian fish tanks. If we go through here, we end up in the living quarters, which we'll show you later because we're going to get back to this place in a little while. But first, I want to give you guys some insight into all the farms that are located under here. Now we have this big staircase going down. You can see that there's a cactus farm behind the guardian farm. Over this way, we have farms for cocoa beans, moss, glow lichen all of these rooms are not sealed up yet because i'm still adding more farms into the project under here you see an item sorter because behind this wall we have a cobblestone generator a basalt generator and a concrete converter that all go into a blast chamber that collects up all the resources that are gathered here i don't very often run those because i figured out that all the all of the um materials that we need, all the cobblestone we need, we are actually automatically getting it from just mining out areas that we need cleared out. To our left here, you can hear the slime farm working. There's slimes in there. If we go down a little bit further, there is a flower farm here, which we have also used, as you can see, to get Crimson fungus and warped fungus, warped roots, crimson roots, and there's a whole lot of flowers that I think I all used for dyes. You can still see the, the seeds from production. Here's some uh, random chests that we haven't really used. These chests are the storage for the Guardian farm, which has been turned off for a long time now, but you guys can see that they're still full of materials. 
Down this way, there's a sugarcane farm and a creeper farm. There's a sea pickle farm there, which surprisingly enough, I've used quite a bit. There's a chorus flower farm here, which is a farm that you need to AFK. So after I built it, I actually never used it because it wasn't really worth it. But then this door, this door is an important one because this door shows you what the heart of the sea is going to become. We're never going to be supposed to be in this industrial space, this open space, because since 1.18, there's now terrain under the world. Here we have the pumpkin and the melon farm, which I recently emptied out. They produce quite a lot. And then through here, we have the slime farm. Now you guys can see that all of these are relatively messy, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend all of that into a cave system that is now located under the heart of the sea. Because this used to go down to bedrock, but not anymore. Because nowadays, I connected this entire basement to a cave that I found underneath as soon as a 1.18 update came out. And in that cave, I've been building my own custom mining operation. You can see that we have a crane that is unloading resources out of the cave. And then there's a lush cave that decorates everything underneath into the heart of the sea basement, which kind of canonically makes it make sense for me. Beautiful thing is this is actually not a lush cave though. The biome for this is just a deep slate cave. There, there's nothing special going on here, except for everything that we've building in, been building into it. Some of these uh, glowberries need to be trimmed up. If we go down this way, there is a automated amethyst farm, which is being produced, is not operational yet. We can actually go there for a second. And then behind that, we will find a dripstone cave. This is just a deep slate cave, as I found it. Over this way, we will find dripstone. There's a beacon here, which I currently turned off because uh, otherwise the beacon beam messes up what the area looks like above ground. I think we can use this to get out of here right now. I don't think we want to do that though. If I'm not mistaken, we can fly through here. And then from here, make our way back up. That worked, nice. And this bridge over here can lead us back up to the dripstone parkour or the drip leaf parkour, which is a, a loop here. And then what this area is going to become is all the storage facilities for the farm. This is a creeper farm. This is a sugarcane farm. They're all going to be connected to nicely decorated hallways. So we can literally walk around through the cave system and go to all the outputs for the farms. And then this area here, this staircase, goes into the Mob Head Museum, which is a really special place because a lot of the stories that have happened in this world are now to be found in a museum. This room over here is where the map room used to be. You might recognize the round shape of that aquarium that we have right now. It is now a pool for axolotls that are just chilling around the base. But it used to be that map room. I had to remove it for lag purposes. And the repurposed room actually turned out really, really nicely. I like that. Let me put my, uh, my helmet back on because we're not in the nether currently. And then this room is where the mob head collection was. That mob head collection is being moved currently. You can still see where the displays were. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna make a bunch of art installations or display cases, uh, whatever you wanna call them. And what these do is they tell all the stories that have happened in this world or are con canonically connected to the world. And all of the mob heads are now in these chests because I have collected well over 2200 mob heads without using a farm for them. That is all thunderstorm action and it has been really, really, really fun to do that. Over here, we have the new museum wing. This is uh, a recent addition. That art installation on the ceiling is a reference to a real world art installation that I made before I got into Minecraft. And this shulker box installation, this is a story in and of itself. After I had the world for exactly one year, on the one year anniversary, we toured the world 
and collected all the shulker boxes that were standing around at projects that I had either finished a little while ago or put on hold because I want to continue something else. These were basically all lost, all 207 of them. And these are the colors that they had standing at those projects being used for resources that I use for construction. Now, what I did is I took all of those shulkers, put them in chests here, and with the restriction of having to use all of them, having to the ability to add zero more and not being able to change the colors, we made it into this big swirling art installation, which I really, really like the way that worked out. Super stoked with that. And then here we have a diamond beacon that we made as a bit of a bit of a meme. Um, but that is connected to this ender eye in the ceiling. And that beam is visible above ground. Here we have a couple of diamond mobs diamond zombies and these are going to be part of the diamond uh sorry diamond uh, iron <laughs> these are going to be part of the iron boys room but over here we have the golden boys room the golden boys room is not entirely finished but it is partially decorated and i really like how it's been coming along the golden boys room is a bit of a tribute to phil's as is the entire base actually because if i had never seen oh my god you guys are loud if I had never seen Phil's world, I would have never started playing hardcore Minecraft or making content, I think. These guys, we got six here, another six here, another six here, that's 18. Then I think these are all adults. There's five of those. And then on this side, we have continued adding more baby zombies. We got skeletons here and on the other side, there's one, two, three more means we got 21 enchanted golden baby zombies in the museum right now and then here to the left we have the glowstone pillars and this place has still is still to be connected but over here we have the halloween room this room i made on halloween of this uh, last year and in the halloween room we have collected a bunch of rare halloween mobs baby zombies enchanted baby zombies um, there, there's villagers with glitched out pumpkins or not. There's uh, a bunch of golden armored mobs over here. And overall, this is a really, really cool collection of all mobs that are pretty, pretty rare. It took me 10 hours of fully grinding that to get a bunch of them. Then over here, we have a tunnel. And this tunnel is interesting because this tunnel is where I've been gathering stone for projects recently. This tunnel goes all the way to Looneyville. There's like, I think, 30 blocks that we still have to dig out. But the only time I dig, this, I dig out this room is if I actually need the resources. Because mining for the sake of mining, why would we? If we go back through here and back through this room, there's still another side of the museum to explore. We had this room over here. I'm actually gonna go up here so you guys can see how this works. This bubble elevator will take us to the surface. And then if we come out here, we can just activate our elytra and we're back up over the heart of the sea. Before we go down into the museum again, which is down here, let's take a quick detour going this way. Because over here, we find my best friend in this entire Minecraft world. This guy is called Gerald, Keeper of the Conduits, Protector of the Loot. He's the first big decorative build that I made. After I just prepared the base, like I drained it out, I made the floor level, got the Guardian Farm set up, made the storage work, and then I built the Nether Portal. And while we were doing this, building up the Nether Portal that is now looking smooth and presentable once more, I decided I wanted to make something a bit more challenging. So on the live stream, we built Geralt, Keeper of the Conduits, Protector of the Loot. And this uh, this is a big milestone landmark build in my world. For the reason that I first experimented with background lighting. You can see that there's lights hidden behind his head. And that make the whole build really pop and stand out. And you can see there's something going on down here. But to get there, I would like to take the secret entrance. This shipwreck was here when I first got the ocean monument drained out. It was here stranded on the bottom of the ocean and I thought it would be super cool if we take this room and make it into a transition that goes into Gerald's cave. And this this build is uh, one that is uh, quite dear to me because there's a story here and that story is that I just gotten into live streaming and 
in between streams, I had one stream one day and the next stream the next day. And then overnight, I got super inspired and excited. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to build this whole transition overnight and then surprise everybody with it tomorrow. And the reactions to that were, were super cool. They were so motivating. And I, I, I don't think I'll ever forget that specific day because it's, it was just, it got such a cool reaction. Down here, we have Gerald's treasure cave. And we, as you can see, there's a little gold ore here infused with glowstone. There's gold blocks, diamond blocks, emerald blocks, which are uh, Gerald's treasures. And then here, there's a little nether gold cave. And if we do this, well, we can fly right on out of here. You see that there's a lot of conduits in the air here. And there's a dragon's head sitting on top of the ocean monument. That dragon head is there to show the moment that we defeated 20 ender dragons and made this world officially ours. And you can see there's these big tentacles over the base. And these things are on a redstone clock. So they are continuously transmitting a light signal going all the way through that tentacle. Where it looks like that one side is broken. It happens sometimes. The uh, redstone timer will reset. But I can turn it on again. It could also have something to do with my NC distance, which is really low right now. But that is why we're not having lag anymore. NC distance is a solution. Let's go back to the um, Mob Hat Museum. We got the entrance here with two phantoms trapped in cages. Golden armor displays, a uh, dinner bone <laughs> skeleton horse, <laughs> and this double winding staircase, which leads all the way down into the museum, alongside the uh, the aquarium, filled with coral reefs. There's an underwater ruin here, and a trident over this way, and then there's a warped wood tree art installation over here, and the first enchanted iron zombie that we ever found. His name is Purple Fox. All the mobs are named after viewers because, as you guys may have noticed, I'm on level 69. Now, I'm always on level 69. Every time I go up a level, I will enchant anything. I will put a... Uh, that, wait, no. I would enchant anything. And then later I realized it was way cooler to every time we had to do that, put a name of viewer on a name tag, and we've been putting those on rare mobs. This over here is the most famous songs in all the land music disc collection and ever since we got an other side it is completed again i have several full sets except for other side i've only got one of those and then here we have some displays for some of my first donators ever on live stream which was a mind-blowing thing that people would do that i've ever since the beginning everybody that has ever donated has gotten their name on a name tag but these were uh, put in place at the very beginning until I realized that so many people wanted to support the journey that it wasn't feasible to build like a little installation for everything. It is still very cool that we have these from way early on. This guy is called Shine Bright. He's my first diamond mob I found. The sword we gave to him, the armor he had on. Here's the dragon egg, she who ruled the world, but not anymore. And then this is probably the craziest collection I have. We call it the Almighty Apples. There's 420 golden apples here. And then there's 68 and one more. 69 enchanted golden apples, which we got from exploring deserts for desert temples and finding ruined portals along the way. In 1.17, we did not use pie charts for underground dungeons. And the beautiful thing is that while we explored for that, we saw so much of this Minecraft world and really cool terrain generation always, always gets me excited. Then here we have the first rare mob room. There's a charge creeper, there's an upside down creeper, the first Halloween mobs I ever found, a diamond skeleton and a diamond zombie. And basically one of every armor type uh, skeleton and zombie in the entire uh, game are here. We got a chicken jockey, but I accidentally washed him off his chicken while I gave him a diamond sword. That's unfortunate. A winch and this this empty spot is a golden baby zombie that has been moved to the golden boys room but there's also drowned here including one with a trident and one with an enchanted fishing rod a baby drowned and then down this way there's the dragon head room 
which I use to store all my dragon heads from end raiding, except that I got a ton. I got way more than I could fit into the room. So this room has since been completed. And if we go here, we're gonna shoot up over the mainland in an area that still needs to be decorated. But for now, it has this little prismarine tube. With that, we have completed our uh, exploration of the heart of the sea, but there's a lot more to see in this world. And the first project that I started after the heart of the sea is Looneyville. So let's increase our render distance by a bit and make our way over that way. Because Looneyville is something special and you need to see it with the render distance up high because this place is super big. What I did here is I made letter frames and put them in the ocean. And those letter frames, they were supposed to spell out the title of this hardcore series. But I never wanted them to look like letters when we were up close. So this entire project, this city called Looneyville, has all the districts that a fully functioning city would need to have, but they spell out the Looney Adventure on the map. Let me show you the map once more, in case you didn't remember from the map room what it looks like, but this is what Looneyville is. It is um, closing in on being completed, and I think before 7,000 days, we will have it completed. It's a project that we come back to every now and again, because it has been so, so, so much work. And recently I added a lot of extra work to it because I felt it was worth it. Looneyville used to be a floating city. It used to just sit on letters. And those were cobblestone slabs that were just floating in the ocean. But nowadays, not so much. I've fully terraformed everything here and made the letters be connected to the ocean floor as if it is actually a city that has risen from the ocean, either magically or um, as a ridge line pushed out from the sea. And I, I like that perspective. I like that it is just a geographical feature. Getting all the terraforming done though, was hours and hours of work. I think just the terraforming is like a 120 hour project. I'll quickly tour all of the districts with you guys. This here is still being constructed. This is gonna be Looneyville Hospital. I do, really do not like the tower, but we'll find a way to make that look good. Then over here, we have the healthcare and administration district. This is educational district with the school and the science tower. Let's bring the render distance down a little bit. So it runs a bit smoother. Here we have the Looneyville City Gardens with the mountain still needs to be decorated because the entire city right now is made in what I call a low detail level, which means it is pretty detailed, but it will be more detailed later. There's a craft district here where you can see there's still some frames for buildings that need to be built. And the terraforming here isn't done, so it's looking really gray. Then this area here is the Looneyville Castle Slums. And the Castle Slums, they support all the people or support housing for all the people that work in the castle. Interesting thing about the castle slums is that a large part of the district is actually underground in a cave. And I really, really like the way this has turned out. There's a community like storage space here and there's lots of small huts and houses that according to the story, people have made themselves to be able to live here. These are the houses for people with the lowest paid jobs who are mostly supported in a castle, as, as that went in uh, in medieval times. And a castle is one of my favorite places in the city. I really like the way it looks. There's one thing though, and that is this. We call it Sky Triangle. Sky Triangle is, you can see it here, a way to make this work as a letter A. Now, Sky Triangle is not gonna be there forever because I want this to be naturally working like everything else and to make that happen we're uh, we're gonna do something special but i felt like that was a step beyond the low detail level because it's gonna it's gonna need something rather tricky to make this work we could just do a roof garden here but i think we really need this roof and we can't really get rid of that so there's a different solution i'm, I'm not gonna spoil it you're you guys are gonna have to wait and see then over here we have something that is currently turned off because I need to revise the redstone, but this is the Hall of a Thousand Ghosts. And you can see that there's holes in the ceiling. Those holes usually rain down phantom membranes. There's a couple thousand in the system because I've killed so many phantoms. And mind you, I don't have a farm for this. 
Because I never sleep, we get harassed by phantoms a lot. And the Hall of the Thousand Ghosts remembers the day that we slept for the last time, which was on day 750. There's a portal here that goes into the nether hub, but down here, we recently built a sheep farm. We needed a sheep farm to um, get the sails for the ships in the Looneyville City Harbor, Looneyville City Docks. It's been nicely decorated here, and this place is just stocking up on wool. If we go back up the stairs, we'll get back into the castle, and I'll show you the docks area. The docks are located right next to the castle. You can see that underwater it's decorated here as well. Although there's still um, there's a couple steps to this area for them, and here we still need plans, for example. Then the Looneyville City docks, you can see there's some, there's some magenta glass here, but on the map, this area looks like it's completely covered. But the interesting thing is that most of the water here is actually open because we put two really big boats in here to make it feel like there's actually a harbor, a actual harbor where ships can unload their goods and sell or buy whatever they are, uh, where's their peddling. As I said, we get phantoms quite often. I think that was most, if not all of them. Down here, you can see the ships sailing through the harbor. And there's a little crane here. And all of these blocks are creative ways. There's a little boat unloading the big ship. All of these blocks are creative ways of covering that map area up again, even though the water is open and visible. And one trick we used is this hot air balloon, which initially I really didn't want to make because it felt like a cheap way of covering the uh, the blocks underneath. But then when I had actually built it, I just couldn't figure out another way of doing it. But it adds so much to Lunaville skyline, so I'm really glad we did that. And then the most recent area we've been working on is the industrial area, where we're building factories that support the Lunaville economy. This here is the dye factory, which turned out really, really interesting. The palette for this is, is an odd one, which we um, figured out together on stream, and I'm really glad we went for that. Then here we have the foundry. This is where the Looneyville metal works are happening. They will cast metal into anything. There's a lot of copper in the build, which I really like. And bricks, which are interesting, because the bricks are also being built here. And this here, this framework, is going to be the brick brickworks, the brick factory. And then this area over here is going to be Looneyville fishing wharf and ship wharf, where the ships are being built and the fishing ships go out. This is one we still have to do. And only this week, I completed the terraforming underground here in terms of the actual landscape. You can see that there's no gravel on the bottom here. Gravel really blends it in. After the gravel, we do the glow lichen to light the area up. Then we do plants and then we do sea pickles to really, really make it come alive. I will return to Looneyville in a bit because uh, I want to show you the city in daytime. And then we're going to tour the lighthouse, etc. But while we're, uh, while we're out here, let's actually take that portal and go through the nether hub once more. And I'm still not going to show you guys the nether hub because there's one place that we made before the nether hub. And that is the end statue. And the end statue was a plan I had for a long time. Or at least I had a plan to do something in the end. Because I want to get rid of the end island and build a uh, blank canvas built there. What I came up with was building a statue that for its um, design really, really relied on sea lanterns. Because I got so many sea lanterns from the, from the Guardian farm that I just want to figure out what do we do with those. Where do they go? And I came up with the idea of building a sea lantern statue on the ocean to work with the reflection. And then I thought, but hey, what if we do that in the end? So I went to the, to the stronghold portal, made it connect to this um, nether roof that we had. Back then it was completely bare bones. And I transformed this portal room. And there's 24 endermen stuck in the pillars here. They, they are just uh, trapped for eternity, guarding over the portal on the top of this tree and if we walk around this uh, this staircase there is a end portal right on top here you can't move an end portal of course so what we did is we cleared out the room and decorated around it taking the stairs is a very inconvenient way of doing this though so if we come out of this portal 
The easy way to get into the end is going straight through here. And before we fly around, I want to go ahead and enhance the render distance quite a bit. Because this place, this build, it got so big. You can see it load in. It's built up on top of a giant mirror made out of black concrete and water. And that reflection in shaders works really, really well. You can see we're flying full speed. You can see how long it takes to get around this area. This build is actually made for a different shader, which is called Sue's Renewed. And this shader has a super dramatic feel to it for this location. You can see that the reflection here works very, very well. I only figured out what the... Um, I, I only got to know complementary shaders, which is the shaders that we use now, way, way after I built the end statue. Let's actually fly through this portal and check out what this thing looks like. If we come in from the outer end regions, this here, this is the outer end. You can see the smoke generators there already. If we uh, Elytra check, safety first always. This is the outer end. And if we fly this way, we'll load in the end statue. It is 501 blocks across on the bottom. And I'm, I'm super stoked with how this build turned out. It's become something special, it's become something unique. And it has this dramatic feel to it, which I really, really enjoy. Of course, on the inside, there is an Enderman farm. Because you definitely need one of those. It used to be... Let, let me switch shaders again and then I'll, I'll be able to find it. Because Insus is so dark here. We still have the remainder here. That's the Endermite from the old Enderman farm. Right now, if we fly into the mouth of the statue, we'll be able to take the elevator shaft down. There's a bubble elevator that goes up there as well. And then down this way, we still have to build the interior, which is uh, pretty low on my list because there's other things that are really, really important. But I also, before I give you guys a world download, eventually when the world is done, I want to get to the point where that is uh, that is ready too. And then here we have the main room around the dragon's nest. You can see that some of the bedrock is gone. You can break that with pistons and TNT. I really like this wall design. And of course we use beacons for lights because uh, we can't flex like that. So we should. <laughs> if we go through here, we end up back at the heart of the sea, central point to the world. And where I will bring the render distance down a bit again. These are the living quarters. Some of my pets are located here. There's a, a bunch of diamond armor just being showcased. And then over here, we have one set of netherite. And this is the armor that I wore for the first 5,000 days in the world. This is the armor that got us a, a long, long way. If we go down here, you can see a redstone block being pushed around. That is the mechanism that makes the um, flow, the flowing water on the outside of the build work. And then if we go through here again, we find ourselves outside the heart of the sea, where we'll make our way to the nether hub. Because the nether hub is the next big project we made. Before we're going to take to that one, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is a little further out, because just about anything is in range of the nether hub. But there was one thing that we couldn't get to work. One thing where we needed a very specific location in the world that turned out to be further out than uh, the rest of the things that were pretty close and easy to find. If we find out in this way, we are going to get to a place that has a fortress farm. And fortress farms are really awesome. It's basically... A lot of people make a wither skeleton farm. If you make a fortress farm, it will also farm blaze rods and uh, a little bit of gold. And basically every mob that will spawn at a fortress. And it's set up in a way that you can use looting. Which gives you a lot of wither skeleton skills still. 
so I had you cover for that. I made this uh, spawn proof area with red stained glass and I did that because red stained glass preserves the feel of the nether. It makes it feel like not the entire thing is covered in like snow, which is a bit of the feeling you get or snow or like ash uh, if you use stone slabs. A lot of people tend to do that. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the look. There is a blaze outside the farm, which is uh, tricky. I, I should fix that later. Right now, not too bothered. You can see that in here, you get a lot of mob spawns and there's slime swipers. Basically, these are flying machines that are pushed outward with the redstone circuit. And then they funnel all of the mobs down into that shaft down below. And then right at the bottom, you just position here and you start hitting those mobs. I um let, let me check for piglins because I had a uh, or zombified piglins. I had an incident here not too long ago, which was really really bad. I don't want to take that risk right now. Uh, but let's turn the farm on and showcase it. So basically, what happens for safety? We shut this off. We had the farm turned off, turned on, so it's gonna start raining mobs down here. And after I turn down my hostile creatures, because it's gonna get loud. As a player, you just start swiping here. And it will funnel a lot of mobs here. You guys can see that we're getting a lot of gaining a lot of levels, which I don't want to do that right now, because then we're gonna have to get back back down to 69 once we hit 70. You can see how many mobs are just being collected at the top. I deactivated the pusher, so that's not pushing them down anymore. And then all of the items. You can hear them being dispensed down here. This uh, farm is designed by Nemble, and I, I'll link every farm in my world down below in the description. You can see that the items are just being pushed around here, and they basically go over the side of a hopper line, which means that if the hopper in the sorting system matches whatever go flows over, it will pick it up. Everything else just being pushed around until it, an item is like five minutes old, and then it will despawn. To get out of this area, we just have to take our Elytra, fly back up, and then there's a hole in the ceiling here where if we just fly straight up we'll be able to get back on the roof and from that roof now we can make our way to the nether hub where i'll show you what we've built in that place because the nether hub is currently i think my favorite project in the world if we go left here by the way we will find a gold farm that is uh, about to be decommissioned because the gold farm has broken since simulation distance became a thing in 1.18, spawn proofing underneath isn't sufficient anymore. I think we can um, we can take a look here, but I, I'm not going to go fully in because it's hard to get back up. But you, you guys see that there's a lot of uh, exploded terrain under there. Basically, I just removed the terrain within the spawnable area if we went to view distance too. But I've never really liked this farm anyway. Because this is probably the one farm that isn't decorated and doesn't look cool. The fortress farm has a cer certain presence of itself. But that gold farm, a uh, yeah, boring. All right, let's make our way back to the nether hub. Or I'll take you on a little tour around that place. The nether hub is meant to glue the world together. It is meant so that if I want to get to one of the main projects, I don't have to go through boring terrain. I can literally fly within the confines of this space and it will carry me to about a 5,000 block squared area, which is really, really cool. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. Let, let's make our way to the front. You can see that some of the nether hub is still being built up because again, low detail level. I want to kind of make a world that's interesting to explore and then color it in and make sure everything feels completed. And we're getting to that stage now with the completion of Looneyville. But there's still a little while to go. You guys can see that there's a flame pattern made out of red nether brick stairs, walls, and slabs with magma blocks behind it. I really like the way that looks. You can also see that there's a lot of dispensers around the build. What these do, we'll get to that later. But first, check out this animated biome over here. This is a, um, a nether waste biome with dispensers and timers in it. And what that does, is it makes the lava flow and then dry out and flow and dry out. And that to me is a very, very cool feature because it makes the biome be a little bit alive, which is cool. And then over here, we got a forest 
mostly crimson with a little bit of warp kind of mixed through it. And these forests are a bit of a trick because if you guys pay close attention to the terrain around the nether hub, you will see that actually most of it is flat. There's like a little hill here, there's a volcano in the back, but the forests are a great way to suggest terrain that has height variations because the trees have height variations. And that saved us so much time in decorating the area because I wanted it to, it, it to look very cool, but also I wanted it to be a reasonable time commitment. I think we balanced that out really, really well and the forest helped a lot with that. Here we have a custom soul sand valley here we have a ghast incident that hasn't been fixed. I'll get to that later. With the basilisk fossil, a really enjoyable build on stream that we made as well. This one was super fun to figure out. And that, for that fortress is just such a presence from every angle. Here we have a custom crystal biome with nether, uh, sorry, sea lantern crystals. Another forest around the back. And then here, we find the volcano. The volcano is in a mushroom biome. And the volcano is actually really cool because it is on a five minute timer, but we can also manually activate it and it will shoot snowballs. Um, for this though, we need more entity distance. Let me, let me pull that up to 300. I'm gonna have to bring it back down because that is the main source of lag. Um, to make that work, we have to, uh, Ah, I think the timer is empty. That that actually works to our advantage right now. Because it means that we can just shoot it. And it normally does that every five minutes if the timer is up and running, which is a super, super cool feature. Um, I'm, I'm going to turn the NC distance down again. Here around the back, we also have the Heart of the Flame, a giant glowing burning gemstone. And right next to it, Brutus, the lava squid. Brutus has been here for a while now, and he has a terrifying presence. I don't, I don't spend too much time with him, but he just looks super cool. Then here we have the meteor, and the meteor goes to around spawn chunks to a biome that we use to get granite, diorite, and andesite. But currently I have a lot of those, so I haven't been there for a little while to get those. And then here we have another crystal biome. This one's a bit more bare bones because I still have to add the trees to it, which I said I would do later. And this is an example of forgotten shulker boxes. These are used to build that crystal biome, which we still have to do a little bit of it, uh, but we kind of forgot about it. And if the world is two years old, we're gonna have to collect those and make a new installation out of them. Or we have to actually finish this project in the meantime. And then here we have the magma biome, which is a little bit bare bones too, but actually really cool even though it's so flat. I, I like the way this looks. And then over here is the ice portal that we've already been through. Let's go check out the inside of the nether hub. Because we have the main walkway here going up to the fortress. If we go through here, we got the central plaza, which looks really, really cool from the top. I like the design for that. That's one of the most detailed places in the entire nether hub because it is the main entrance. So I felt like it kind of had to work already. Through here, we have the portals that go to the heart of the sea. Both of these do, they end up in the same place. And then we have the staircase going up and the main hall of the nether hub. Now this main hall isn't built yet, but can you guys imagine what we can do with a space this big? I have a really wild idea for it, which we're gonna realize not too long from now. And then down here, down here we find something special. Down here, we find signs with all the names of anybody who has ever made a donation to the channel. And I'm very, very grateful to all of you guys because I couldn't do what I do without you guys. That being said, I also want to mention that you, right now, by watching this video, by being a part of my Looney Adventure, you are helping me out tremendously, whether you donate or don't. Please don't ever feel uh, like you should be doing that. I literally, I couldn't do this without you guys. And I think before it's all over, you guys will understand how grateful I am actually for everything you've done. Because I think I found the perfect way to eventually show you that. Right here, we have the uh, super smelter. This, this thing is just insane. These are two really big bamboo farms that fuel, funnel fuel <laughs> into, the, into the system. 
And there's 92 from the top of my head furnaces here that will uh, smelt anything we need smelt it really, really quickly. Absolutely love that place. And then here we have a um, fairly complicated redstone clock. The clock itself is fairly simple, but then what it does is, is something else. This is the engine to our firework setup. And that firework setup, that is quite something. I decided I wasn't gonna fill it up for this uh, this world tour, but I can show you what it is all about by hitting play on this replay mod clip. This firework show, we run it every time we have even the slightest thing to celebrate. It takes a long time to fill it up because of all those fiery snowballs you see. The way that works though, these ramparts, the way they have come alive, I'm, I'm, I love this place. It is so, so, so cool. Unfortunately, I feel like we can't expand on it much more because we're hitting the, the cap of what Minecraft wants us to do. We're, we're like pushing it. So if we need one, want to make more fireworks. We're going to have to do that in a different place <laughs> and we will, and we will. I actually think guys, and I'm surprised about it because i thought this one was gonna be a lot longer oh there's one thing one place that i haven't shown you guys yet which i kind of want to go to i was thinking this world tour was going to be very very long because we were going to go everywhere but the thing that saved us a lot of time right now is that we actually went through the nether hub we have connected the world up so well that even though things are far away they are also really easy to get to which I think that is a super cool thing. We have a world that is simultaneously massive. There's a lot of big projects over a large, large area of, of space, but they all kind of tie together into one consistent world, one cohesive project. That to me is mega cool. Right now we are here and we want to get to here, which means we fly out this way and then the frames are going to get better oh no wait it's the other way around i had my orientation uh, upside down which actually makes more sense than you might might expect because um thing is i recently found out my entire world is upside down now how does it even work how do you make a world upside down um Another question is, how do you not figure that out before you're over 6,000 days in? But the thing is, you can put banners on the map, right? And you, you can put text on them. And they will be really cool because they will show you everything you have in your world. And you, they'll show you the name of that place and, and what is going on there. Super awesome. Unfortunately, we can't really use that. I, uh, I asked a lot of that Elytra. That is tricky. Um, but banners in my world, they don't quite work. Why not? You're wondering? Because the Looney Adventure, as it is written in Looneyville, has a clear orientation. This here, this is a squid farm, which uh, doesn't seem to be working right now. Interesting. Maybe I did something wrong there. I, I don't quite know. Um, I'm just going to go and do this. Usually when I stand in that AFK spot, maybe I was just outside of range. But if you stand in the AFK spot, it will spawn squids in that portal underneath. I think the, the simulation and entity distance are too low for it to work right now. It's what, what went wrong. But the squids will spawn in here, suffocate because they're out of the water. And then um, they, they will die in that system. Let's make our way back to the uh, to the world map and I'll show you what is up with the world being upside down. I think we can.
let's um, do something a little uh, unconventional. Let's make our way down here. Here's the thing, guys. This world is upside down. If we put banners down, they look like this. Except for this one, because these are upside down letters. So we, we kind of tricked it, but it, it looks goofy. And that means that, unfortunately, we won't, won't really be able to name all the districts on the map. But it is what it is. Honestly, it does not make the world any less cool. I love this place, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this little tour of it. I'll just keep grinding away on it. And before long, I'll finally be ready to give you guys a world download so that you can have a loony adventure. Because, believe it or not, the loony adventure isn't about my adventure. It's about yours. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon. Looney, out.